Hi, this is Dave Kale. I want to talk about the biggest time wasters for salespeople. You know, good time management for salespeople has been an obsession of mine for my career. You know, in the last uh, couple decades, I've been involved in helping really tens of thousands of salespeople improve their results through more effective use of their time. And over the years, I've seen some patterns that occur pretty regularly and these are tendencies on the part of salespeople to do things that detract from their effective use of time one of one of the uh, rules that I have formed over the years is this the single most effective way to improve your results as a salesperson is to improve your time management if you become more effective at time management, your results will quickly improve. So uh, in, in, that, in that vein, here are four of the most common time wasters I have observed. See if any of these apply to you or if you're a sales manager, sales leader to apply to your salespeople. So here they go. Number one, the allure of the urgent and trivial. The allure of the urgent and trivial number one time waster for salespeople. Salespeople love to be busy and love to be active. We have visions of ourselves as people who can get things done. You know, we're not idle dreamers. We're out there making things happen. And a big portion of our sense of worth and our personal identity is dependent on being busy. At some level in our self-image, being busy means that we really are important. And one of the worst things that can happen to us is to have nothing to do, nowhere to go, and nothing going on. And so we latch onto every task that comes our way, regardless of how important it is. For example, one of our customers may call with a back order problem. Oh, good, we think something to do. We are needed. We can fix it. So we drop everything and spend two hours, you know, expediting, like expediting the back order. Now, in retrospect, couldn't someone else, maybe someone in purchasing or customer service, have done that? And really, you know, couldn't they have done it better than you? And didn't you just allow something that was a little urgent but trivial prevent you from making some sales calls? And wouldn't those potential sales calls be a whole lot better use of your time? Or here's another example. One of your customers hands us a very involved you know, request for quote. Ah, uh, you're thinking, I'll schedule a half day at the office. I need to look up the specifications. I need to calculate the prices. I need to compile the literature and so on. And so we, we become immediately immersed in this task, working on this project for our customer. And retrospect, couldn't we have given the project to an inside salesperson or customer service rep to do the legwork? Couldn't we have just communicated the guidelines to someone and then reviewed the finished proposal, save us a half day? Probably. So once again, you know, we, suc we succumbed to the lure of the urgent present task, and that prevented us from doing things that are far more effective from making additional sales calls. It siphoned our energy away from the important things and transferred it to the trivial things. You know, I can go on for pages with examples, but you get the idea. We are so enamored with being busy and feeling needed that we often grab at any task that comes our way, regardless of how unimportant. And each time we do that, we compromise our ability to invest our sales time more effectively. That's number one. Number two, the comfort of the status quo. This is, uh, this is a time-wasting habit, the comfort of the status quo. You know, a lot of salespeople have evolved to the point where they have a comfortable routine. You know, they make enough money, they've established routines and habits that are comfortable. They really don't want to expend their energy, the energy it takes to do things in a better way to become more successful or more effective. Now, you know, comfort zones can be good. Some of the habits and routines that we follow work, work well for us. However, our rapidly changing world constantly demands new methods, new techniques, new habits, and new routines. Just because something has been effective for a few years doesn't mean it will continue to be so. 
This problem develops when salespeople are so content with the way things are, they've not changed anything in years. Now, if you haven't changed or challenged some habit or routine in the last few years, chances are you are not as effective as you could be. For example, you could still be writing phone messages on little slips of paper when, you know, putting them into your contact manager would be more effective. Well, that's, a, that's a simple example of a principle that can extend towards the most important things that we do. Are we using the same routines for organizing our work week, for determining who to call on, for understanding our customers, for collecting information? You know, the list goes on and on. And the question is, are we are we doing this the same way we've done it for years? And if so, there is probably a more effective way to do it today because things have changed rapidly. So contentment with the status quo almost always means salespeople who are not as effective as they could be. You know, there's an alternative, and in, in, in my book, uh, 11 Secrets of Time Management for Salespeople, I talk about the use of the MORE mindset, the M-O-R-E mindset, as an alternative to the status quo. I recommend you take a look at that. That's number two. Number three in my list of four most common time-wasting habits or concepts is, is this, a lack of trust in other people in the organization. Let me re repeat that because this is, this is crucial. A lack of trust in other people in the organization. You know, salespeople have a natural tendency to work alone. After all, we spend most of, uh, most of our day by ourselves. We decide where to go by ourselves. We decide what to do by ourselves. We're pretty much on our own all day long. It's no wonder then that we just naturally want to do everything by ourselves. And that's generally a positive personality trait for a salesperson. Unfortunately, when it extends to those tasks that could be done better by other people in our organization, it becomes a real negative. Instead of soliciting aid from others in the organization, and thereby making better use of our time, many salespeople insist on doing it themselves, no matter how redundant or time-consuming the task is. You know, the world is full of salespeople who don't trust their own colleagues to write an order, for example, to source a product, to enter an order in the system, to follow up on a back order, to deliver some sample or some research, to research a quote, to deliver a proposal, on and on it goes. The list can go on forever. The point is, many of these tasks can be done better or cheaper by someone else in the organization. Salespeople don't realize, don't, don't release the task to them because they, the salespeople, don't trust the people in their organization to do it. Too bad. It's a tremendous waste of good selling time and talent when you do that which someone else is supposed to do and you do it because you don't trust them so you're doing their job not yours too bad here's number four a lack of tough-minded thoughtfulness a lack of tough-minded thoughtfulness ultimately time management begins with thoughtfulness that means a sufficient quantity and quality of thought energy invested in the process. I like to say that good time management is a result of thinking about it before you do it. Good time managers invest sufficiently in this process, the process of thinking about it before you do it. So they set aside time each year to create annual goals, for example. They invest planning time every quarter and every month to create strategic plans for their key accounts and their use of their time. They plan every week. They plan every sales call. Poor sales time managers don't dedicate the time to think about it. They just do it. Not only do good sales time managers invest a sufficient quantity of time, but they're also disciplined and tough-minded about how they think. 
So it's one thing to think enough. It's another thing to think well. And the way you think well is to ask yourself good questions and answer them in writing. It sounds so simple, but that's an incredibly powerful process. Ask yourself the right questions in the right sequence and answer them in writing. I mean, here's a, here's a series of questions you should be asking yourself pretty regularly. And when you answer these questions in writing, what that does is cause you to think about it before you do it. And not only think about it, you think about it with depth and detail and precision. Questions. What do I really want to accomplish in this account? What, here's another one. Why aren't they buying from me? Here's, here's a simple one. Yeah, who is the key decision maker in this account? Here's another one. Am I spending too much time in this account or not enough? How can I change what I'm doing in order to become more effective in this account in general, etc.? You know, these are, these are some of the tough questions that good salespeople and good sales managers consider on a regular basis. They don't allow their emotions or their personal comfort zones to dictate the plans. They go where it's smart to go. They do what it's smart to do. They do, th they do these things because they spent the quantity and quality of thought time necessary. You know, there's now that's four. That's four of the top time-wasting talents. Of course, there's hundreds of time-wasting habits. The four I just mentioned are the most common. If you can correct them, you'll be well on your way to dramatically improved results. Remember, I have made this observation. This is one of my rules. I have very few rules. This is one. If you want to improve your performance, the quickest way to improve sales performance is through improved time management. Okay, that's it. Bye-bye. Hi, this is Dave again. I'd just like to encourage you to invest in yourself by uh, spending, uh, you know, 15 or 20 bucks on one of my books, 11 Secrets of Time Management for Salespeople. If you feel like you're overwhelmed, if you feel like you have too much to do and not enough time in which to do it, then you got to figure that out because it won't change unless you do. And this book, 11 Secrets of Time Management for Salespeople, has, it gives you the answers that you need. I mean, you will find practical powerful suggestions to improve yourself get control of your world you know get get, get take control of the chaos that is uh, you know the life of a typical salesperson today with very specific practical suggestions a couple thoughts about the book this was originally uh, written under the title 10 secrets of time management for uh, salespeople it became a worldwide seller it's available in eight countries or eight languages in over 25 countries. And then a number of years ago, the publishers came back to me and said, we'd like to celebrate the 11th anniversary of the book by adding another secret. Can you write 11 secrets? And so we added another one. And the book, uh, at the second edition of the book is out there now and has become just as popular as the first. So 11 secrets of time management for salespeople. Invest in yourself a few bucks. You can buy it on Amazon or Barnes & Noble, wherever books are sold, or, or my website as well. 11 Secrets of Time Management for Salespeople. Do yourself, do yourself a favor. Honestly, this book can make, a, can make a transformational change in your career. Okay, that's it. Bye-bye.